When I lost my sight at age 12, I lost my sight by being hit with a baseball. I thought my life was over. The image of a blind person that I had was someone standing on a corner with a tin cup and a cane begging. Ed is truly an inspiration. He has such a great story. Most of all, he's funny. One Friday afternoon, my father came to pick me up and it was snowing. And he said to me, Ed, I have your galoshes. I put my foot out, my father pushed. I was pushing. <coughs> All of a sudden, Sister Rose Magdalene walked off the elevator. She yelled, Mr. Lucas, what are you doing? Oh, Sister, it's snowing outside. And I don't know if you know it, but I have to put Ed's galoshes on. She said, really? She said, let me help you. She went over, gave him an elbow, pushed him back, <laughs> pulled the galoshes off and said he's only blind, he's not handicapped. And when he puts them on, you can leave. An hour and a half later, we left. <laughs> he's learned how to turn those tears to laughter. And that's the great thing about Ed, is that he's able to bring out all those emotions in us. I started my career as a sports writer. At first, it was tough. Many writers talked about, what's this blind guy doing here? He shouldn't be here, he can't see the game. How can he write about it? He's a token handicapped guy taking up space in a clubhouse, taking up space in the press box. I became so down about it. I went to Rizzuto and I said, Scooter, I don't know if I can do this or not. Please, the way they're talking about me, he said, listen, what I told you, Years ago, and I'll tell you now, you can't give up. He said, I was told I was too small to play baseball. I didn't listen to those naysayers. And you're not going to listen to them either. Remember, you're going to make it. You can't give up. He touches you. I mean, I'm 43 years old, and I had to choke back a few tears a few times. His speech here um, opened my eyes up, too. Yogi heard me talking about Someone gave me a pair of golf clubs. And he said, hey, you play golf? I said, I'm learning. He said, hey, I would like to play you. I said, where can we play, Yoke? He said, how about uh, play at my country club, in the Montclair Country Club? He said, what tea time you want? He said, how about Tuesday night at midnight? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't be able to see. I said, that'll make us even. I found his humor <laughs> was the most inspiring for me. I have been touched by many Hall of Famers in my life. And I challenge you today to be a Hall of Famer. Make a difference in someone's life. Give a helping hand, whether it be as a parent, educator, employer, or friend. Be the light in someone's eyes when you make them smile. Be a shoulder to cry on an ear to listen, and the arms that reach out to lift others up. Do all of these things, and when your last inning comes and the final votes are counted, you'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Thank you very much. If you can't get inspired by his story, uh, you just have uh, no heart in, in your body because uh, he is so uh, inspirational, uh, very articulate, and very funny. Uh, I mean, it was a grand slam. I've never seen Ed speak before, and I was touched. I was really touched. I wanted to go up and give him a hug after I listened to that. <laughs> you leave with such power. If I'm going to complain about something, I have to think about, you know what, that's not really worth complaining about anymore. The man is just an amazing speaker. I would recommend him to anyone that wants to hear a story about someone that's overcome challenges in their lives. I'd go pay to see him, hear him talk anytime, I really would. <laughs>